Okay, the shocks. There's four shocks in the car. I'm going to show you one of them. Because let's face it, you don't want to see me build four shocks. You may notice there's already one built. That's because I built it. I did all this stuff. And I didn't push record on the cameras. But, there we go. So, I usually start off when it's an emulsion shock by uh, making sure I thread the hole in the bleed hole first. Just makes it easier to get the screw in later when you're juggling a shock full of oil. And take the screw back out. Mugen rates their, uh, their pistons based on hole size and they put little dots on and all I've done there is put a bit of sharpie on it and rubbed it off so you can more clearly see the dot, it just helps a bit you know, later on when you're sorting out what pistons and what shocks or whatever. Not my idea. Can't remember whose idea it was. I think I got off a YouTube video. But you know, good idea nonetheless. So, here's the shaft. First of all it's washer, and then the piston. Secure that onto the end with a screw. Make sure everything's seated down proper. And grab your shaft pliers, which are nice to keep your shock shafts all smooth and scratch free. If you use a normal set of pliers, we might mar the surface a little bit and you get oil seeping out. There you go, one shock, shaft, one shock, shaft and piston. Maybe we can give, these, give you these funky little tools actually, to be able to tighten up the uh, shock body to the shock cap. Which saves me doing my usual of uh, clamping the body in the, the pliers, and then uh, driving a hex screw through the hole in the shock, top of the shock tower shock tower, shock cap, and torquing it down. So it's nice. And now I've got to carry more tools around with me. Next thing I tend to do is prep the O-rings on the, the shock body. So, you, oh, before I check that one, you might notice there's two very similar O-rings. One slightly smaller. That one's the top seal, and that's the one that goes in the adjuster to stop it rattling and changing its adjustment all by itself. So, use some of this 1UP blue stuff on the rings. A lot of people use team associated green stuff, but I've still got some of this left over from when I used to drift, so I'm going to use that. So, the top seal on first. Don't want to over stretch it or pinch it or anything. Don't want to dig your nail into it, but use the back of your nail just to make sure it's all seated tidy. And do the same with the, the bottom seal. A little bit of the stuff, whether you're using one up blue stuff or associated green stuff, or if you're just using some of the shock oil or whatever. Leave it up a little bit so it's a bit more supple. Again, stretch it over the threads and roll it down and sit it in place with the back of your nail. There you go. All nicely seated and everything. Now, there's two ways you can do this next section. Some people put all these into the bottom of the shock and uh, Put the end cap on loosely so the O-rings aren't compressed and then gently slide the, sh uh, the shock shaft through. I say gently because obviously there's a threaded section on the end that you don't want to uh, damage the O-rings. Or, and the way that I tend to do it, is I gently drop this in first. Put the O-rings and everything 
over the end. I feel it's less pressure on the O-rings this way. You do you! Whichever way you want to do it. Getting the O-ring grease on and gently over the O-rings. Then it's a spacer. Then it's the next O-ring. Again, gently grease it up a little bit. Gently over the threads. Then we've got this end washer, which is machined and uh, shaped to uh, seat into the end cap. So that goes on. All the pistons are um, machined as well. Bosch pistons! And now I just gently slide that down the shaft and into the end. Make sure it's all seated. All moving smoothly and everything. And then I put the end cap on. Right. The next thing I want to do is put this on the end. You want to make sure you uh, screw it down the right distance so you've got the same amount of travel on each shock. I've already preset the calipers. I know this because I did the other shock that I didn't record. Cause idiot. He says checking that the camera's running. <laughs> So I can back that off a turn or so. There we go. So that set the travel. Let's put the manual and everything's Running nice and smooth. Next thing to do, chuck some oil in it. <coughs> so you can actually supply the shock oil. That way around. Uh, 500 CST. Same front and rear. So obviously all the damping differences between front and rear is taken care of by the size of the piston holes. Bit unusual. Usually people run thicker oil up front and thinner in the rear, but. And different pistons and stuff. But it's all in the tuning. So now we've just filled that, there's probably some oil underneath the piston. So what I tend to do is move the piston up and then pull it down to get that oil out, uh, that air out from underneath. Do it a couple of times, make sure it's all out. Bit of a twizzle. And top it up. Right now there's probably let's have a look. A few bubbles of air in there. So we'll just set that to the side for the moment. For the air to air bubbles to rise and release from the oil. Give that a couple of minutes and we'll be right back. Just talk amongst yourselves. Uh, that's been sat for a little while and all the air is released from it. We'll put the top cap on. Like so. And use the handy dandy tools they supplied. To uh, tighten it up. I don't want to over tighten, I don't want to strip any threads. Just feel the pressure in there. And you definitely need a rag for this bit. Because you do get a little weepage of the oil. Now you want to bleed the shock, which is getting rid of the excess oil. Top tip, which uh, Matt H told me about really, is if you put the spring seat on at this point, 
when you're bleeding it, you're actually bleeding it the right amount, you're not over bleeding it or under bleeding it or whatever. You can just go straight to the end of the travel. So with that on, we're gonna slowly, because you know, don't want a jet of oil across the room, do we? Compress the shock down, getting rid of that excess oil and any air that's in there. screwing getting to over tighten it just like the seal and really that should be it but generally what I do is I work it for a little bit as well and then bleed it out a second time it's just a, a matter of holding it compressed the screw. I'm turning it back up again, just in case there's anything extra in there. Now we should have a fairly dead shock. A little bit bouncing it. Dribble oil. And remove the shock seat. The next thing to do is to put this little O ring in the adjuster. I tend to lube this one up as well to keep it supple. Obviously, it doesn't have to seal or anything. And depending if you're in a dusty environment, you might not want to do that bit. Stop, you know, just getting in there and becoming all, all gritty and so forth. But we tend to strip our shocks quite regularly. I say strip our shocks. We, uh, I was fiddling with the settings because we ain't no good. We don't know what we're doing. We're always pulling these things apart and putting them back together, trying to work out what we're doing wrong. And then just screw that all the way up the shock body. There we go, and spring on, spring seat, there we go, one shock, bit of slop in the spring there but we'll get that adjusted out with the collet in a bit. One actually really smooth shock. Quite impressed by that actually. Put that with this mate over there. And uh, I'll do the rest of these. And then we'll be back to put them on the car. A few last bits and bobs. Put some wheels and tyres on. And you shall see it in all its glory. Back in a sec. And as if by magic. All four shocks done. I did come across an issue though. My wing stays are two different lengths. Don't know how I didn't notice it when I put it on, but they're two different lengths. I can't see anything on the contents that says you've got two different lengths and I don't think I've managed to lose two of them because I've put everything in nice little tidy boxes over there. So I'll work that one out find out how to get a matching pair but let's press on with everything else because we're this close this close um, just the shocks on and um, wheels and tyres and then she'll look all pretty the uh, body's already in liquid mask over there like I said earlier so we're getting so close
Ja. Jag ska till Tjocksson.